How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today I bring you a very hot story. It's all over the internet, it's all over TV, it's everywhere, and that is of Anthony Scaramucci being fired and or resigning and or being forced to resign from his post as White House Communications Director. Now, this comes after only about 11 days being on the job. Well, not really on a job because technically he did not start until August 15th of 2017. He'd been announced 11 days ago, but he's not officially started yet. So in essence, he has been relieved of duty before his actual job began. But I'm going to go ahead and move on. There was a press release put out by the current press secretary, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. And I placed that on the screen before you. It basically says that he left because he wanted to have John Kelly be able to have a fresh start with his own team. John Kelly is now the White House chief of staff after Ryan Spiebers was fired and or resigned or whatever they want to say that he did. So that is a whole situation. Now, there's a few reasons why he may have left, and I'm not really sure which one is true, but one of them seems to be more true than the others. I'll break down the first of probably three reasons first. The first reason is because of the crazy article from The New Yorker. It was a reporter that claimed that Scaramucci had called them and said, hey, I'm going to just vent to you. I'm going to talk about everything. Steve Bannon, Ryan's Priebus, et cetera, leakers in the White House. And in the article, some things he said were true, like about Ryan's Priebus, or if not true, it could kind of be seen as making sense. He said that Ryan's may have been one of the leakers. Now, that may be true, that may be false, but it kind of does make sense. And it's not too outside of the ordinary to say that that could be the case. I think this was after he had been fired or right around the time he got fired. So, that does kind of make sense. Or in Ryan's case, when he resigned, I think that was the official statement from Ryan said he resigned, didn't get fired, but I digress. Now, he said something about Steve Bannon in an interview as well. Now, what he said about Steve Bannon was a little bit NSFW, not safe for work. I will not repeat that, but I'll put the article in the box below if you're curious to see what he said. And he actually had to apologize for that. Scaramucci, that is. He was talking about, oh, well, I use colorful language sometimes, but I won't do that in the future. So already you kind of, you know, on a, on a rocky path right there. That may have been a reason why he got fired. If not the sole reason, it could have been one of the reasons why he got fired or resigned or was forced to resign. The second reason is because of his wife. His wife actually filed for divorce over the weekend. Today is Monday, July 31st, 2017. I think it might have been Saturday where it came out that his wife filed for divorce. And part of the reasoning may have been because he was overly ambitious. This will make America great again thing his wife was not really with. So she filed for divorce. Now, he may have left to try and save his marriage. I'm not sure how long they've been married. I'm not sure if they have kids. I'm not sure of the financial situation, if it's a prenup or whatever. So he may be trying to reconcile with his wife by leaving his post voluntarily. I'm not really sure, but that might make sense. Now, the third reason which probably makes the most sense is because of John Kelly. Now, John Kelly came from the Department of Homeland Security as the Secretary of Homeland Security, right? He came from that post and he is a Marine. So he believes in chain of command. If you are the chief of staff in the White House, the person that is the communications director reports to you and then you report to your superior, which is probably the president or whoever else is above him. And Scaramucci had a direct line between him and the president. John Kelly is like, no, 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 you got to report to me and not to the president directly. I'm not sure if it was a conflict there. If he said, I'm not going to do it. And that may have caused a firing or if it was because he saw the relationship already when he came in and said that, OK, I'm going to end it right now. You're going to go ahead and leave. Because in an article from Yahoo News, it was reported that John Kelly is the one who requested that Scaramucci be fired. It was not Donald Trump himself, which brings me to the next thing about the press and how they're trying to cover this. I've seen everybody on Twitter, all these, uh, you know, Vox and all these other places that are similar to Vox, like left leaning news websites online and or offline, like a newspaper or a TV station. They have this list of Trump firings and resignations. So they're trying to attribute everything to Trump. Like, OK, if you quit, then that means it's Trump's fault. There's nothing else to do with it. You know, let's not talk about his wife leaving them. Let's not talk about the guy that came in there that had a problem with him that was not directly associated with Trump. Because, look, if John Kelly comes in there and says, OK, I'm your boss. Trump is not your boss. I'm your boss. And you got to do what I say. He's like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. Is that Trump's fault? These are his employees. If it's an employee problem between two employees, what's a guy do with Trump? 
So it's make a whole lot of sense to try and attribute everything to Trump. People look at him as the reality show star still. They look at The Apprentice, that you're fired. They look at all of that, and then they try to lump it in with Trump's personality when he's in the White House. But my thing is this. I'm not really worried about him firing people or anything like that or anybody resigning because part of his campaign promise was to drain the swamp. Now, how are you going to drain the swamp if nobody gets fired, if no heads roll, right? And also about personal accountability. If you do things that are wrong, if you do things that are not going to be able to get the job done, then why shouldn't you get fired? It's not like back, you know, in years past or under Barack Obama, I think there were some people that he would hire that would do nothing. Look at what happened with the scandal going on with Debbie Washington Schultz and the IT director. I've heard that the guy that's the IT director pretty much did nothing and was just there just, you know, collecting money for no real reason. What is the point of doing that? Why spend my hard earned taxpayer money on people that do nothing? I'm not really sure if the IT guy was paid for by taxpayer money, but you understand what I mean. If you have anybody in the government position, any kind of White House communications director, uh, some kind of secretary or some position or whoever, they need to be doing their job. And if they don't, they need to bounce. Maybe in years past, they can be in there as a show pony and collect benefits and collect checks by doing nothing. But I think that the culture in the White House will change under Trump. Now, maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe Trump is just firing people for no reason over petty issues, but I'm not really worried about it. I think at the end of the day, I'm more worried about the country running more effectively. If someone loses a job or get fired, then, I mean, that's on them. I don't wish anybody get fired from their job if they do a good job. But if they don't, then it is what it is. In the private sector, when you don't do a good job at your job, you get fired. I mean, I've been fired before. I don't take it personal. And matter of fact, I've been fired for no real good reason, but it doesn't even really matter. At the end of the day, the person who employed me thought that I was not doing a good job, so therefore, I got fired. It is what it is. So I think people that are overreacting, the mainstream media, the news, social media people, etc., Need to just relax, focus on the country going forward, focus on a strong economy, focus on Wall Street, focus on things like that, that indicate that we're moving forward in a positive way as a country. And that's pretty much what it is. And if you want to be out there protesting, talking about not my president, he's not going to last long this day. And the third is going to be a long eight years for you. I don't see this ending anytime soon. Who are you going to put in there that'll be able to replace Trump? But they're talking about uh, Kamala Harris, please. If Hillary Clinton couldn't win, then how is Kamala Harris going to win? Hillary Clinton has been known to the public eye for like 20, 30 years. She had $1.3 billion behind her. She had all the mainstream media networks behind her. Kamala Harris has a checkered past that is going to come out. See, I know about Kamala Harris already. Her past is checkered. is going to come out from voices inside the black community that have sway. So take that into consideration. Who are you going to be able to put against Trump? I think we should focus on local level by getting those in office that are able to get things done, that are able to pass a repeal and replace, that are able to do what we vote them to do, rather than just saying, oh, Trump is firing people. So therefore, it's his fault when things don't go right or they don't go as planned in our nation. So that's pretty much all I got to say about it. What do you think? Do you think that Scaramucci was fired way too soon? Do you think that he should have been able to prove himself a little bit more? Do you think that John Kelly was the wrong hire to put as the White House chief of staff? Now, who would have been a better choice? Now, the thing about John Kelly, like I said before, he's a Marine, chain of command, real structure. I know about that. My father was a Marine, so I grew up around that a lot. I know how it is. I think it's a good way for the White House staff to be in order. Right. That's your job. That's your duty. White House chief of staff. So the staff in the White House, you got to be able to have in check. It's not Trump's job to be over there babysitting or doing whatever. Everybody has their role. They got to be able to delegate. If somebody gets fired because they violate some kind of rule of protocol that the chief of staff puts in place, then whose fault is that? Is that Trump's fault? Is it the chief of staff's fault? Is it the person that violated the rules fault? Whose fault is it? I think to just blame everything on just one guy without looking into it to see who really did what is kind of like intellectually lazy. But that's just my two cents about it. Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace. I'm not one of these people that need to have unnecessary face time with the president. Okay, but I do have Oval Office privileges if that's what you're talking about. And I do have the opportunity to meet with him because I'm going to be his comms director. Uh, and he told me that he's going to put me in charge of this. And so I want to make sure that I'm linked to him and syncopated with him in a way that he likes.
And so I'll meet with him, but I don't want to waste his time and sit in the Oval Office unnecessarily.